Hello, uh, today we are at Made on TV and uh, our guest is uh, Markus Learning. Uh, he's a German Commissioner for Human Rights. Um, thank you very much for coming to our studio at Made on TV in Berlin here. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yes, um, so um, I guess uh, because we recently had in Azerbaijan uh, presidential elections, um, we would start our conversation with um, basically your opinion. What do you think? Um, how uh, did elections go? What was your observation? I know you were not able to go to Baku, but uh, from what you were reading, the messages you were getting, the international media coverage, and the assessment of OEC, ODIR, and other organizations, um, we would uh, really appreciate if you would share with us your opinion about all this. Well, I think what uh, OEC uh, uh, explained and what they gave as an assessment is pretty good. They said there was no they were playing field before the election. There was uh, problems because people couldn't gather freely. Uh, candidates didn't have full access to media, especially not to electronic media, as much as they should have had. Uh, but then on also on election day, you saw uh, ballot stuffing. I think more than half of the uh, of the election districts there were uh, allegations of fraud. So these certainly were not free and fair elections. Fifty-eight percent uh, precincts they said were. The elections have been conducted bad or very yes, bad. Yeah. So, um, in comparing to other countries in the region, like AT, what does it mean that when OEC or DIR says 58% of precincts, the elections have been conducted they're bad or very bad? Like, well, I think overall, uh, Azerbaijan has a very bad track record of elections. Uh, ever since uh, the father of uh, today's president came to power, uh, elections have gone from bad to worse and uh, this uh, report we got now from OSC is so bad and so clear in its language and points its finger so much at, uh, at the faults that were made, the mistakes that were made that Azerbaijan should really rethink Azerbaijani authorities where they are. They are a member of the Council of Europe. They have committed themselves to free and fair elections and they don't abide by what their own commitment in all these years. And on the contrary, they even go aggressively against uh, OSCE reporting these things. So I believe that uh, uh, the rest of Europe should, should look very carefully at what has been happening, take this very serious, and uh, put a lot of pressure on uh, the government of Azerbaijan to have free and fair election. And so, so what do you mean when you said that um, the, the government of Azerbaijan is going very harshly against OEC or DIR right now? Like, do you mean the statements against them or something more is going on right now? It was two things. The government obviously uh, very harshly reacted to the statements by OEC, and OEC has the highest standard of election uh, observing. They have a long time observers. They look at not only the day of the election, but they look at the fairness of the, of the campaign before. They look at all different aspects, uh, access to media, and so on and so forth. They look at, at the electoral laws. They look at the lists of the uh, uh, electorate. So they are very good. They have a very good reputation for the electoral uh, observation they do. And what their statement said obviously didn't please the government of Azerbaijan, although it certainly was the well, uh, very well-founded observations that were made. And... So there was a harsh reaction against the statement made by OSCE. And now I hear that there are reports that within the organization uh, OSCE, the Azerbaijani government is going against ODIR, against the uh, electoral observations that were made there. And I think that is not a good sign. That is really worrying. Well, that's uh, very interesting um, because uh, I remember even when I was once at OEC um, just giving a speech at one of OEC conferences, the official representative uh, of Azerbaijan at OEC uh, stood up and during question answers uh, session said that you have no right to discuss internal affairs of Azerbaijan at OEC. Uh, which uh, made laugh a lot of people at that audience. So now we are hearing that they are trying to push uh, OEC or DIR, probably with some other allies, 
to to pressure them to change the methodology or maybe to abandon the observation of elections. Um, I think, uh, you know, I'm very worried now after what you told just now, because <clears throat> we have seen that um, Aliyev and his government have been very effective in uh, um, something what uh, uh, was called uh, caviar diplomacy um, in Council of Europe. So they have been extremely effective uh, in January this year uh, when the vote uh, on the resolution of Christoph Stresser came on uh, political prisoners in Azerbaijan. That resolution was voted down by majority of uh, European politicians in the parliamentary assembly of the Council of Europe. Um, um, let's come to Council of Europe. So, um, you know, the parliamentary assembly of the Council of Europe, which was headed by Mr. Walter, uh, made a statement saying that elections were free and fair. What do you think about this? And how do you evaluate the impact of Aliyev lobbying policies in Council of Europe? And uh, what do you think should be and can be done about it? First of all, I think that uh, the, the lobbying of the Azerbaijani government within the Council of Europe, especially within the Parliamentary Assembly, has been quite successful. And I've, I'm calling on the colleagues that are members of this Parliamentary Assembly to really take their job more seriously. They're not in the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe to be lobbied by this or that government, but they are there to make sure that one of the most important human rights bodies, democracy bodies, rule of law bodies we have in Europe is successful and is sticking to its own rules. And very obviously the delegation that was observing the elections in Azerbaijan did not do that. Um, as far as I know from the statements I saw and uh, from what I heard is that it was very clear from the beginning there was not going to be a common statement between the Council of Europe observ observers in Baku and the Audio OSCE observers on the other side, and that is worrying, because Audio and OSCE are very professional in what they are doing. Council of Europe people are coming in, uh, observing a day, two days, three days, maybe the election, and I think there is good reason to believe that uh, a lot of the members of the delegations were not very neutral, and that these people were influenced strongly by the Azerbaijani government. Mm -hmm. In what way ever. But Mr. Walter, the head of delegation of uh, PASE in Azerbaijan for these presidential elections, was officially receiving uh, money uh, from TEAS. You know, it's a lobbying uh, group organization. Uh, the head of this group is the son of the Minister of Emergency, one of the richest oligarchs in Azerbaijan. And they were officially giving him money. <clears throat> he, he's a member of the Friends of Azerbaijan parliamentary group uh, in Great Britain. Uh, is there any conflict of interest? You know, I mean, uh, is there any legal or political way in the future to prevent people who are involved already in lobbying the interests of Azerbaijan government in national governments mm. uh, or parliaments or national or international level to prevent them from uh, at least, you know, being the head of the delegation? Well, I think that is one, that, one of the questions where the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe should take itself more serious. Uh, they need clear transparency rules and they should have a rule that says if there's a conflict of interest, a member of the uh, Parliamentary Assembly cannot be a member of the delegation observing the election. And uh, if someone is receiving money or uh, has whatever kind of connection with the, the with the country and is not independent really in the way he should be, then he cannot be a member of an electoral observation mission. I think that is something where the Council of Europe must take itself more serious and that's one of the worries I have that they don't. They don't really take themselves serious. There's a lot of pressure from uh, Azerbaijan and from other countries like Russia uh, not to take rules of the Council of Europe as serious as they should be and that really is a disgrace. Thank you very much, Marcus, for coming to Maidan TV and answering uh, our questions. Thank you very much and uh, see you at our next program.